guys, my name is David Rowley. I am a professional footballer for Ket FA in the Malaysian Super League. And for the last eight years, I've been fortunate enough to play football overseas. I started off my journey in Thailand, then moved to Luxembourg, Germany, and now for the last three years, have been playing in Malaysia. So if you're a young footballer out there, this story is good for you because I've got a lot of experience um, playing overseas and made a lot of mistakes. And yeah, you can learn it learn from it to apply to your own career. So this is my story. It's not just any individual player, everyone on the I started football when I was five years old at my local club in Brisbane, Australia. It's called the Wynnum Wolves. Wynnum, Wynnum, as we used to say. And it wasn't until I was 13 years old that I started taking football more serious. I was playing for my high school team, training four times a week, playing for my club team as well, four times a week training, and then on top of that, I was doing this personal training, private training with a Italian ex-professional player, Salvatore. And he taught me a lot about football. And because of this good quality training and a lot of it, I became a very good player. And at 16, 17, I was one of the best players in my state. At 17, I got selected to represent the Australian schoolboys. So it was a team. They chose 11 players, well, not 11 players, but a team of maybe 20 players from all the schools in Australia. And we got um, the opportunity to go to the UK to play against England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales schoolboy teams. Before I went on that tour, I actually got invited to the Brisbane Roar. Now the Brisbane Roar were in the first division, the A-League. At the time there was only eight teams in the first division that was professional and then the second division was semi-professional. So when I was growing up there was no academy, there was no pathway to professional football. But I got this opportunity and I was training with the A-League team for three weeks and then I got osteitis pubis which is inflammation in like the pubic bone, so in here, and it affected my running, had pain in my groin, so it was difficult, and I had to rest. And I rested for maybe a couple months, and then at that time, we had to go to this tour in the United Kingdom. So we went, and it was an awesome experience. I got to play against England. For example, Chris Smalling was in the team, centre back, big boy back then as well and he went on to play for Manchester United and the England national team. After that tour, I decided that I wanted to stay in England and try and make it as a professional footballer, just like any other kid. So I was living with my uncle in Blackburn in the north of England, and it was difficult because I knew no one in the uh, football scene. So I had no family, friends, no contacts whatsoever. I had to start from zero. And what I decided to do was write and email all the clubs in England from Premier League to League Two. So hundreds of letters, hundreds of emails, and only two replied. And they said, no, we're not interested in offering you a trial. Yeah, it was, it was hard because I had was going nowhere and I was already there for two months. What I decided in the end to do, I went down to a youth team and watched them train. I think it was Kala youth team and they were playing in League One. 
and I talked to the coach after the end of the training and he offered me a trial. And in hindsight, that's what I should have done a lot more. I should have gone up to trainings, talked to the coach and got trials that way. Because writing emails, doing these letters, it's most of the time not gonna work because they get thousands, thousands of messages from players all around the world. So I went up to Carlisle and I was unsuccessful and I returned back to Blackburn and I was looking for more teams and I managed to get another trial with a conference team called Southport and at the time they were fifth division and I thought nah that standard's not good but in hindsight now I see that conference level is a very good standard but at the time I was talking to my parents and they're like oh I might as well come back and study get a degree and then try again later so I said yeah it's not a bad idea went back to Australia and got my science degree and became a teacher so that took four years but during that time it wasn't like I stopped football I was still playing the second division in Australia I was earning a few hundred dollars per, per game and yeah just playing football and going to uni so I started senior football when I was 16 second division and then played until I was 22 until I left to Thailand but after I got my degree I found a full-time job teaching so I was a teacher and I taught for one year but I always had this desire this like itch to play professional football train and play full-time that's what I wanted so I was always looking for opportunities and it's funny how Thailand came about so my mother was talking to one person that had a friend that was playing in the second division in Thailand and I got in contact with him and he said bro come on over stay with me I'll show you around Bangkok and I will introduce you an agent and we'll try and get you some team I went over to, to, to Bangkok and I didn't even know this guy and he helped me out and I still remember this to that day like yeah so much I appreciate it so much and that's what I always now try to do give that love back because I was also in a desperate situation I wanted to make it as a footballer and he helped me out so that's why I now try and pass that on and try and teach that as well and you know with my YouTube channel I get so many requests of people asking oh can you help me find a team and it's very difficult I have to say no most of the time because it's a difficult it's a difficult situation to be in I can't help everyone but the best thing that I, I, I can do is make videos on how to go about finding football teams what's the best way so that you don't make mistakes like I did and waste your time but anyway yeah indebted to to him for helping me out and that changed my life so went to Thailand I was staying with him I went there in November season started in February so I had three months to find a team and after two months it was coming to the end of December I had about 10 trials and all were unsuccessful now when I talk about trialing in Asia trialing in Thailand is mental so don't expect if you came over don't expect that it's just going to be two or three players the coach knows you sometimes the coach don't even know who you are the agent says oh yeah the coach knows you but he does not know and then there's been situations I've gone to a trial there's 30 or 40 foreign players all trialing and what the coach did was just play 11 versus 11 and then they got other foreigners just on the bench and maybe you only get five minutes to play because how some coaches work they see like oh he's a big player he looks big give him more time but the short player there yeah maybe five minutes at the end so this was the trialing yeah this is what I got myself into and after two months I still hadn't found a team and, it was, and it's very frustrating waiting around and being constantly rejected it's not easy to take and many players out there probably couldn't take it but then the agent came to me and said look there's a team called Chumpon FC Chumpon is where I grew up it's eight hours south of Bangkok and I said all right let's go there and try and sign with this team so I went down caught an overnight bus 
I went to the training, did really well. I remember dribbling past these guys and then scoring. And yeah, and that after that training, signed a, my first professional contract. I was very happy. I didn't sign for much. Only at the time, third and fourth division players are only earning around a thousand US dollars. Plus, I had accommodation and a motorbike. It was a massive drop from what I was earning in Australia, but I didn't care because I was playing professional football and that's what I wanted. Now, playing in football in Thailand was a cool experience. Luckily, I had a good coach, so trainings weren't too long. Some teams, the coaches have old, old school styles, so they've been training for hours, maybe a few hours. But normally with the higher you go, like the first division, the football is very good. Thailand, the first division, it's the best in Southeast Asia. But yeah, that first year in Thailand, I played six months for Chumpon FC and then I transferred to another team called Narati Wat FC. And again, that was an awesome experience because we were getting like 10,000 fans to a game and yeah you really felt like a football footballer a professional footballer so yeah could not complain was very happy about that but then at the end of the end of the year I decided to go to Germany because I met a girl in Thailand and I wanted to move to Germany with her but before I finish on Thailand I just want to say Thailand is probably not for everyone. If you're used to, let's just say you're coming from America, you're used to really good facilities. Some teams in the third and fourth division, the facilities are not very good. I remember going to places, there would be, for the shower, there would be a, what's it called? What's the thing that collects water? Um, like this big drum that collects water and then there's a hose that's connected to that and you'd shower from, from this. So stuff like that, but overall, I don't care. It was a good experience, wouldn't change it for the world. I'm used to backpacking, I'm used to hard times, so it was good. So, met this girl and decided to move to Germany. And again, I had the problem, I knew zero people. And this time it was even worse because it's in German, I don't speak the language. But I had learned the hard way in England that emails and letters don't work so I put myself out there I went up to teams okay after trials and then found coaches and agents through this way and I ended up in Luxembourg I had met this German coach he was gonna coach in the Luxembourg second division and he said he has a friend in the Luxembourg first division so I said, all right, I'll go there for a trial. And I caught a train, I think it was eight hours from where I was staying in Germany. I trialed for two, two days and the second day they said they wanted to sign me. And that was that. I was moving to play in Luxembourg in the first division. Now I didn't live in Luxembourg because Luxembourg is very expensive. I was staying still in Germany and just driving over the border 20 minutes to training. Luxembourg is a good league. You've got lots of players from France, Germany, Belgium coming to play in this small little country. And my time in Luxembourg, my season in Luxembourg was difficult because there was this rule that only four new players in the team could, could start. And we had four foreigners, I was one of them, plus four players, international Luxembourg players, on loan from the best team. So there's eight, eight players for four spots. And I didn't get much game time, and that was difficult, and I was very frustrated at the time. But now in hindsight, I realized it was probably my fault. I felt at the time, and I still do, felt that I was better than these players, but I wasn't showing it. I wasn't scoring enough goals. I was a striker, so if I was banging goals, then maybe the coach would have given me more chance. That's the way I see it now. But at the time I was frustrated that I wasn't playing. So yeah, just a piece of advice for young players out there. If you're being on the bench, just like Joda, he was sitting on the bench, he was never playing. He kept on training hard and he got his chance. So if you're a young player out there, sometimes just have patience, keep on training, keep on proving until you get so good that the coach cannot play you. 
So finished in Luxembourg and I wanted to move to uh, Berlin actually where my girlfriend was working and I found a team in Leipzig which was an hour away. It was called International Leipzig, they were in the 5th division and how I connected to International Leipzig was through a good mate of mine that I had met in Thailand, Ladule. He is from America as well and that's the beauty of football. You meet so many people on your journey and then you'll bump into them in, again in the future and he helped me out, he got me a trial, trained there for a few days and the coach wanted to sign me. The team is playing in the 5th division in Germany, football is a high standard. In 5th division you're getting a lot of ex-professionals from higher divisions coming to play and then also you've got the youth Bundesliga players that don't make it, they don't sign first team contracts so they drop down to the 4th, 5th and 6th division. And then you've got players like me and other foreigners that want to try and work their way up in Germany. We had one player on our team called Boca Jumo. He was Inter Milan youth team player. Had another one, Marcelo Freitas, was playing for, I think he was Santos Junior uh, in Brazil. And there was Manu, he was Barcelona youth. So really good players in the, on the team and they all wanted to show themselves and move up. So our team was training full time and we were trying to get promoted so we go to the 4th division. The deal that I signed was we were sponsored by the hotel so got to live in the hotel, all food was provided and then on top of that got bonuses and a small salary. So I played there for a season, we didn't get promoted unfortunately so then I decided I wanted to move to Berlin to be with my girl and I got a trial with Tennis Borussia Berlin and the way I got a trial was like I said before the best way to get trials is through other players you meet their agents and because I've been talking around I've made all these contacts it was easy to get a trial in Berlin and I trialed with TV Berlin and I signed with them another good team a top fifth division team and again we fell short we finished second in the league and we didn't get promoted but anyway, enough of that, at the end of that season I got the opportunity to come to Malaysia. Now my mother is from Malaysia so when I returned to play in Malaysia I could play as a local player. I didn't need to compete for a foreign spot and that helped a lot because in Malaysia, especially in the Super League, the first division, if you want to sign as a foreign player it is very very difficult you need to have a big CV so for example I was playing for Negri Sembalan and our foreigner our Asian foreigner was from South Korea Kim Do Hyun he had played nearly a hundred caps for his country he played in the Premier League and he was now 35 and he was playing in our team and then we had another another guy that was national team for Lithuania, uh, for, Lith no, for Latvia. So yeah, they signed big players. My first season in Malaysia was tough because I broke my wrist in training and I had another injury and I was out for pretty much the whole season. So I didn't get much of a chance to play. And then the second year that I was in Malaysia, last year, I was struggling to find a team because I hadn't played for Negri Sembla and I hadn't got any caps so not many teams wanted to sign me so I had to go to Kelantan very small salary and try and make my way up again and that's what I did I played all the games, did really well and by the mid-season there was a lot of interest and I wanted to leave the team because there was financial problems and players weren't getting paid so at mid-season I got maybe five offers from different teams and one of them was Keda and another one was another Malaysian Super League team and they were both the same money and I was choosing between these two and one agent said don't go to Keda because you won't play, they've got national team players etc etc you'll sit on the bench and then at the end of the season you'll come to me and say oh can you help me find a new team but I went against his vice because I thought it's better to be at a big team, it's tougher at a smaller team and also if I'm training, I'm playing well, 
then the coach is going to give me a chance and then it's up to me. So I chose this and in the end it worked out really well. I played the majority of games for Kedah in the second half of the season. We went to the FA Cup final in front of 80,000 people. We won the cup and then we went to another final, the Malaysian Cup final and that's a really big tournament but unfortunately we lost to Johor. But because we won that FA Cup final, this season we qualified for the Asian Champions League qualifying rounds. We played against Hong Kong in the first First round, we beat them comfortably at home, and then in the second round, we went to South Korea, and yeah, we got beaten. It was just, they were at another level. It was quicker, they shutting us down quicker. It was in the winter. So yeah, we got taught a lesson. But after that, came back to Malaysia, and was about to start off another season in the league here. I signed another year with Keda because my performance last year was really good and then COVID struck so that's where we are here now and we've still got I think a couple more weeks until we can start training again we've been in the house for a couple months now so very eager to get back on the field but yeah guys that is my story just a brief summary maybe you've got some questions you probably do um, just leave them in the comments below or you can message Joda and we can try and answer them. But yeah, this is a great thing that Joda's doing, these little interviews, because you can learn so much from players that have had experience at higher levels, seen some of the interviews that he's already done and it's good. And, it, and I think there's a common theme that runs through all these videos is that hard work and the right types of training will make you into a much better player. And that's something I learnt in the last few years only. When I was growing up, I didn't have real a, a footballing education. I wasn't told, okay, don't go into this zone, don't run there, this is how you mark a 442, etc. Only in the last few years I've learnt that and I analyze my videos, and that's why I've grown so much in the last couple years. I'm playing so much better. So yeah, guys, you're pretty lucky that you've got all this information now on the internet which you can, which you can uh, look up and learn from. But yeah, anyway, that was my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, and yeah, until next time. Thanks, guys. I can't feel my face, but nothing really can't stop me to